offer you made. Okay. That would help them. Yeah, I'll have to write it. Well, just all that lack of trouble in the back. Oh, okay. Well, you can come and go. We won't talk to you. Oh, I mean, it doesn't. Unless you scream and holler when you walk I'll in. I'll try not to. It's hard sometimes. <laughs> I know, you get so Can't excited. <laughs> okay. Uh, my first questions are going to concern your service in the legislature. And then I'll talk to you just briefly about some, ask you some questions about yourself. Oh, uh, you, you've served, this is your second year? In the second year, staff. first serve. And you, you weren't in the Senate before or no. anything like that. Okay. Uh, are you a Democrat or Republican? Really? Republican. Yes. And how long have you been a Republican? Can you remember when you first registered or declared that you were a Republican? Register to vote. I'm going to say it must have been my freshman year in college. Okay, that sounds... All right. <laughs> why did you become a Republican or why did you register as a Republican instead of a Democrat? Uh, family tradition. Okay. So, way back, or just your parents? I have, I, I've never known a Democrat in my family. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good reason. <laughs> that's probably a reason. Um, and was never felt as though it was ever shoved down my throat, or that, that you couldn't vote for the person. Mm -hmm. But I just always remember my, who was always a Republican. Mm -hmm. well, that's interesting. <laughs> Well, now, uh, your first election then was in, in 90, and uh, can you describe that a little bit? Who did you run against, and why did you run, and who helped you? Well, it's one of those things where everyone says, what made you decide to well, run? I, I guess maybe a part of it is my age, uh, a combination of things. My children are older. I w have been a substitute teacher. I had renewed my teaching certificate. There wasn't an opening in the school system. So it, it became a point in time, what are you going to do with the rest of your life? Mm. The opportunity appeared. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was one that if you were ever going to do something, and it, it wasn't something I'd ever actually thought about as far as doing public service in this way. But the opportunity was there, and I thought, okay, this is, I'm going to go for it. Okay. I'm going to do it. This is the time to do it. So it was a brand new experience. I filed on the, the day of the deadline. Uh, made a trip to Topeka. Uh, <laughs> drove to the Topeka. day of the deadline. The day like of the in deadline. June, in the middle of June. I, I decided on the Sunday before that Monday to yes. <laughs> The gentleman I replaced, he resigned uh, on the Friday. Oh, well, that's so a good it was. Reason. It was. Yeah. It was one of those that those of us who did decide to run, some had signed up earlier. Mm -hmm. The rest of us. Mm -hmm. Were there a lot of people in that election in the primary in the general? I had a primary. It was a a gentleman, a business associate in Russell. Mm -hmm. He had the store down the street from my husband. The day he decided to run, he took a petition down Main Street and had all the business people sign it. My husband was one of them. You're kidding! It, it's <laughs> one of those rather interesting parts of a, of a <laughs> thing. The day of the primary, my refrigerator went out and I spent the entire day with my opponent in my home putting in a new refrigerator. So it was a, a most unusual oh my primary. And in the general, of course, then I had uh, a Democrat opposition. He was from another county, mm -hmm. Ellis County, who's a Lutheran minister. For me, it was a very good experience because it was a very positive campaign. Mm. There were no negatives. Mm. There was no uh, name-calling, bashing, so to speak. Mm -hmm. It was just all very positive. Well, that's very interesting. Well, now, uh, the opening appeared, but surely you had sort of thought about something about this before that <coughs> opening appeared, before the incumbent decided not to run. Is that what Well, you I knew the incumbent. Uh -huh. He was uh, a friend of my husband's. They were classmates. And I knew the ins and outs of the, of the 
legislature from his his viewpoint and different things and had been told at different times that it's time for women to get into politics. This is this is the so the incumbent actually encouraged you. He encouraged me. I I sort of ignored it for a while, but then decided to go ahead. Who, who was this? Artie Miller. Okay. Uh, now, who worked for you in this first campaign? You kind of got a late start since you didn't file till the last minute, but who helped you get a campaign together in that short notice? Uh, Artie Miller helped. My husband helped tremendously. And my campaign chairman was uh, a doctor an optometrist there in Russell, Dr. A.D. Glenn, who was a, a big supporter and told me that I, if I would make the try for it, he would help me all he could. And he did. And and my husband and Dr. Glenn went door to door with me everywhere. Uh -huh. So that, those were your supporters. It's kind of a medical community, it sounds like. Is that oh, not necessarily. Not necessarily. It's just it's, that's the way it seemed. And I had other support as far as friends that would have had fundraisers immediately for me and helped with that because I think that was my biggest shock was the cost. Yeah. I, I just couldn't believe it could possibly cost Well, now, that kind how, of how did you earn that? I mean, how did you raise the money? I had. Uh, yeah. Probably, it was probably 50 50 from PAC money and the other 50 from individual contributions. Uh, did you, do, you, you said you went door to door, did you use the media at all? Anything, anything? Uh, the media in what way? Well, it was television, radio, or. I ended up at the end of the campaign, right at the end before the general election, I used the TV. There, it, it's very expensive, so you have to have the funds available to do it. Somehow I managed to uh, have a wonderful spot. It, uh, it worked out quite well for the money that I spent, which wasn't a great deal of money. I'm thinking it was like $350. But I had some very nice spots that worked out very well for me. So I was pleased with the money spent. Because of the area I represent, I represent parts of four counties. I do not have a complete county. It circles the city of Hayes. It's a smaller... Towns are smaller in that area, and it's more rural. But it also means that I have numerous newspapers, four county seats. Oh, my goodness. It makes it more difficult as far as media coverage. So you have, a, you know, you have your little weeklies, you have your dailies, <laughs> and everything in between. Plus, you have a numerous radio stations. Hmm. So it's one of those that you finally have to decide just how much money you're going to spend where. You have to be very careful with the dollars. You probably have more media than others do. Yeah. How did any of them support you? I mean, did they endorse you? Uh, did any of the stations or newspapers? The newspaper in, in my hometown has had a policy for many, many years. They do not endorse candidates. They talked to me about it, said they would like to endorse me, but felt like they could not go against their policy, and I had no problem with that decision at all. Uh, another, The other daily newspaper in that area endorsed my opponent. It was probably one of the nicest non-endorsements <laughs> in an article that I have ever read. And basically, they were they were most kind to both of us. They, in, in that particular article, the, the lady that had written it, the editor, said that they would like to give one of their candidates to one of the other districts because they thought we were both very qualified. And the reason they endorsed my opponent is because he had run for a public office before and had served in a public capacity. And I had never, I had never, I had never run for anything in my life <laughs> prior to this. <laughs> well, this is interesting. You're really pretty unusual in that respect. I guess, I guess so. That's what they keep telling me. So. Well, did anyone? Now you talked about knowing our email. Know, did anyone in either one of your, your you or your husband's family? serve in the legislature here or in another state no. before this or So you had no real ties or connections other than I guess the only the only tie if you want to talk about ties or public figures, I am Senator Dahl's state representative. 
it, it's a very unique thing when you look oh, at my yeah. registration, my registered voters list, and there is Dole Robert and Dole Elizabeth and Dole Robin, uh, Senator Dole's daughter. They are all registered. Oh, that's interesting. In my area. They lobby you a lot. What <laughs> they do? No, and, and they, he doesn't question my votes and I do not question his. They are, my husband is a third generation person in Russell and is a, we are close friends of the Dole family. So we have known the Doles for many years and probably maybe I should say that one of my biggest supporters and also contributors was Senator Dole during Ooh. my campaign. And he even at the very end, uh, he called me, I had one of his staff call and say, the senator would like to come home and, and uh, do a copy for you. I said, oh, that's not necessary. I know how very busy he is and, and all these things. No, Carol, the senator would like to come and do this for you. He is coming. So I think it was the uh, Sunday before the general election we came to Russell and we had a, a wonderful turnout there in the community. And, oh, that's really and interesting. And he, he was very, very supportive. And they told me the only thing that I, I didn't do correctly at that particular meeting is that I didn't ask for money. <laughs> I said, well, I'm, I am becoming smarter. I will ask for money the next time we do one of those. <laughs> Coffee. <laughs> well, you described your, your district a little bit. Are, you, are they mainly in rural lands? If, if you had to look and say what their interests were, right. it would be more rural. Although that the other thing that's that uh, about my area and the counties I represent, they are also oil, oil producing counties. You have agriculture and oil. So it's it's ag and oil. Yeah. And are these also their at this point, now? well, it, right now you realize they're both a, a depressed economy, so it's it's a tough issue. Mm -hmm. the taxes on the big issue, yeah. property taxes, especially in your rural areas because of of the land. Well, in your campaign for election, did you focus on those issues, or what were the issues you focused on, or were there issues? When you're running for the very first time, I think you are very general in focus. Property tax relief, uh, the, the vote for Western Kansas. I guess basically I campaigned on preserving our heritage. And knowing full well that although the, the control and the votes were no longer there, I still thought I could make a difference, knowing full well that I have to compromise and saying that I would strive hard to find some things that, to solve some of our problems, knowing that they would not suit everyone's needs, but they would be something we could all live with. Well, uh, now are these the same types of issues that you're working on now that you're I think so. I, I think a lot of the issues, property taxes, anytime you're talking any kind of taxes, and we're, we're going to spend those taxes once we collect them, is going to be something. I, I, every once in a while you have someone that uh, is running for an office, and I don't care whether it's on a local level, so the school board or mayor or anything else, that sometimes they have a tendency to be a little bit with the tunnel vision and they have one issue on them. I think that is, it's not good for the area they're going to serve and in, and in the long run it's not going to be good for the state because there are too many issues that, that you cannot allow yourself to be bogged down with one main issue. Session. And this session is one of those crazy yes. sessions that uh, we cannot allow ourselves to become bogged down with, with school finance, although that encompasses so many of the different elements. But there's some other issues out there that are going to have to be addressed also. Yeah, this is probably an unusual session in a lot of ways. I don't know. They told me that last year. They said this is a very unusual year and how do you feel about it? Well, I had no comparison, so it was mm -hmm. just a normal year for me. <laughs> now I'm coming down here and they said, this is going to be the craziest <laughs> session ever. Well, it probably will be if I compare it with last year. This, yeah. one, this one will be crazier than last year, so yeah. it's my comparison. It's not over yet. I know. <laughs> um, 
sometimes people identify some of the issues as women's issues. Now that isn't really true right now specifically. But do you, how do you feel like, uh, do you think people expect you to address women's issues more than other issues? And yes. If so, which ones are you most concerned about? No, and, and I'm going to say that probably because of the area I represent. When you represent a rural area in western Kansas, it's it's not going to be the, the women's issues that you're going to find in a more urban area. So I, I don't believe that's a that is related to your to your district or something. I think it's more district related. Are there any other women legislators bordering your district? Well, it's rather odd. <laughs> At this I'm point in time, I am the only female in the House that is west of Salina. I think we were just talking but about But we that have three female senators that represent Western Kansas. Senators? But I'm, but, but I'm the only one that is uh, in the House. We're finding a big difference. In, 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 we haven't done it, finished yet, really, okay. in the comparison. Of so there doesn't need to yeah. seem to be any more in the house. The house members are there, so it's more in the senators are maybe a combination. So it was very surprising for me, I guess. And that's one of the things. There has, uh, there haven't been either. There has never been a female representative in my They... I think one of the amazing things that I, when I was campaigning, one thing I found as a woman my age, and I'm going to say, and I'm 46, so it's, it's that age, whatever that age does for you, your biggest support comes from women that are younger and older. The support, and I am... Maybe it's a it's a feeling of jealousy. I'm not sure where that is, but you don't have the support of your own peer group hmm. as strongly as the other two. That doesn't mean it isn't there. Yes. And there's always going to be personality conflicts, or someone isn't going to like you. I mean, if, if that if everybody likes you, you're doing something wrong, <laughs> 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 or you're not making any decisions or something. <laughs> so that I found that out, and also you're you're always going to find someone. Uh, that says that you have no business running. You should be at home taking care of the children. Right, we'll get to that. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so that, you know that's yeah. one of those those other yeah. things that you have to contend with out on the yeah. out on the trail when you're knocking on doors. Oh, if, if we're just talking about the issues, how and you could describe yourself or put a label on yourself, conservative, liberal, whatever. How would you? What would you choose? What label would you choose for yourself? Well, being a Republican, I'm going. I'm going to say that I'm, I'm conservative. You find yourself that changing more and more each year. I think that there is because of some of the issues involved. Mm -hmm. But I, but I guess if I had to label myself, I would be a conservative. Mm -hmm. As a freshman legislator, since the party bill wasn't here, did you have a mentor who kind of helped you find a place to sit and find the committees you wanted to be on? I was one of the, probably, I would say I was the luckiest <laughs> freshman <laughs> here. I had a wonderful mentor, plus I have two excellent office mates. Mm -hmm. Bill Klein from Overland Park and Rochelle Kleinster from the Odeche. And Rochelle is my mentor. And I, knowing you know those two people, you know that the, the caliber and also the different areas. And so within this office, we we basically can represent the views of Kansas. Mm -hmm. That's so it's a, it's a nice mesh for me and it, uh, to be able to sort of have someone sound sound off the ideas on someone and see what they think. But did you know Rochelle before you got here? Had met her. And she was one that the day I came down to file, I sat in this office and visited oh. with her. And mm -hmm. I said, well, I, I, 
I don't, you, the doubts. And she said, oh, let's, come on, I'm just going to take you upstairs and we'll get you signed in. And then you walk upstairs and you see the rope and uh, they kind of push you into the <laughs> circle, <laughs> the roped off center, and, and you're on your own. <laughs> Oh, and I had known Phil. Okay. Oh, that's good. Uh, what committees are you on? I'm on the Commercial and Financial Institutions okay. and Governmental Organization and then a Joint Committee with the Senate on Arts and Cultural Resources. Okay. You were probably on that committee this summer that introduced that Oregon Trail. Bill. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, you haven't been here long enough to hold any leadership positions, but we're before checking that out to be holding leadership. And you're also in the wrong part. Well, forget it. <laughs> yeah, forget, yeah, forget it for <laughs> this year, right? It <laughs> yeah, it is going to work at all. <laughs> okay, what bills? Have you introduced any bills? Or I have, I have your name on anyway. that uh -huh. I have not personally introduced any legislation, and I have had my name on numerous bills. Mm -hmm. Probably more, probably signed on more this year, feeling more secure about bills than I did last year. Although I, it surprised me last year when I looked to see how many bills my name was right. on, how many bills. It surprised me that I thought I didn't have any signing that many bills, but I did. This year, yeah, again, I, I've signed on bills that I thought would be helpful to my area to be supportive. Um, hoping that <laughs> they could go through and knowing that some of them don't have a chance without some amendments that then make them somewhat unable to, you can't even defend your own bill anymore, <laughs> support it. That's the, that's one of my fears with signing some yeah. of, the, of the bills. And a lot of them then will go ahead and be introduced and become a committee bill so you don't mm -hmm. really have your name on that. Do you participate or are you uh, involved in any coalitions or formal or informal groups. I know there's a women's coalition, whatever they call no. themselves from time to time. Do you have that with them? Uh, can you think of any particular victories or defeats or things that you have strong memories of already after that one and a half sessions? <laughs> Well, I, I guess for a freshman, the first thing that I walked into when I came down here was the interstate banking. And that had been a controversial issue for many years. And because of the switch in the control of the House, they felt like there was a, a good possibility of getting it out of committee and seeing it on the House floor. And they felt assured that once it was on the House floor that the votes were there to pass it. They'd had difficulty all the years previous to that ever getting it out of the committee. The committee I served on, Commercial and Financial <laughs> Institutions, had the hearings on that committee, and I was lobbied very heavily until about a, a week before, and then I was left alone, and, and it was due to my office mates primarily helping me out and saying, she's a freshman, let's let her make her decision. It was a tough one. And I, it was one of those that I can honestly say that I voted in my district. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, and I voted no on interstate banking. It, of course, <laughs> passed and passed out of committee and passed on the mm -hmm. House floor. So it, it but I, I, di I didn't really feel like it was my a defeat. It was mm -hmm. just one, the most difficult issue for me in the face as a freshman. Makes an impression on you mm -hmm. too. Makes you learn very quickly <laughs> that to keep your mouth shut until you make up your mind, and it, you learn a lot of things when you have that type of pressure going on. Do you think there's any difference in the house and way on the effectiveness of men and versus women? Or can you, do you think there is a difference in the eyes of people between men and women as legislators? Mm -hmm. so whether or not they're effective, effective. Mm -hmm. in, in every respect, not any one specific one. I think it's going to be individual and also districts. Not really related to any gender differences. I don't think so. I really don't. Okay. 
Okay, uh, now I'm going to ask you a few questions just about you. Are you a native Kansan? You said your husband's family, yes, but you are too. Okay, where did you, where were you born? And where did you I was born in Great Bend. You might say that. The possible there. I have lived all my life in Rice County. I was born in Rice County near Lyons and lived there until went to college at Fort Hayes and from Fort Hayes went to Russell to do my student teaching and took a teaching job there and have lived there ever since. So I guess you can say I, I lived my youth in Rice County and I lived my adulthood in Russell County. <laughs> so you haven't been, no, I have you not moved very far. Didn't move very far away. What did you teach? I have a degree, a BS in business and I taught a lot of typing. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's <laughs> Which I have to laugh, most of my hours were in economics. Uh -huh. And at that point in time, economics was in the social studies department. And I had six hours of typing in college. And I had, I think, six classes of typing. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. Um, I still grade letters as I read them today. Anything <laughs> that's typed, I, I circle errors. and <laughs> words per minute. <laughs> right. Uh, well, um, what was your maiden name, and can you describe your family growing up a little bit? Mm -hmm. yeah, Springer. And I grew up on a, in Rice County, as I said, Raymond and Dolores Springer. I went to a two-room country grade school called Sunny Four, and we we were in the Bushton High School District, country grade school, and we had a Frederick telephone, and we had a Rural Rat 3 Lions mailing address. It was about as rural in the middle of wherever as you can possibly be. What kind of things did you do in the school? Or did, did your high school have a debate? Did you well, debate or? first of all, let me tell you, with grade school, with a two-room, there was no kindergarten. I went, I had three years in, in what we call the lower room, and at the fourth grade level, then I would get to go to the, the upper room for math, but I stayed in the lower room for spelling and some of those, and, and I went all eight years with one other girl in my class. Oh my goodness. Our first two years, we had twin boys at different time, and they left after that. At, at different times, maybe someone would move into the community and they would be in our class for a short period of time. But uh, that girl and I went all eight years together. And then she went to Chase High School and I went to Bushton High School. So we were separated at high school. We are still good friends and have remained good friends for all those years. And you sometimes wonder about your education in, in a small school like that. The one thing you didn't have is we had art once every two weeks. We had music once every two weeks. There was a teacher that traveled the, to all the little country schools. So there are some things that you, there, the extras, I guess, mm -hmm. that, that we assume are part of the, are the core now, that we called extras or the frills back then. So the things that you stressed then was your the spelling, the Rice County Spelling Bee, those type of things. Well, did, did they have sports or activities outside of the classroom? I remember when I was in the fourth grade, I, I was allowed to cheer because they had to use the eighth grade girl in the basketball game <laughs> with the boys. So it was one of uh, you know it, you when you're in a small school like that there are you know I was I was that was my fun for the back then it was track meets uh -huh. and they were county wide. Uh -huh. Uh, you really didn't. You didn't have baseball teams. You didn't have basketball teams. You didn't have any of the, of the sports that you have now at all. How large was your high school? Well, the high school itself was not probably a little over a hundred. That's pretty small. My graduating class, there were ten of us. Well, I was born in '45. Next year, 46, was the start of the baby booms, <laughs> baby boom after the war. So my father was a farmer and, and of course, still there. And so it, 45 was a small, one of the, the smallest graduating classes, but there were seven girls and three boys. <laughs> well, uh, in high 
high school, you, you didn't you didn't have folks did like debate. Did you hear uh, thirty of my uh, Did you have uh, FFA uh, and uh, uh, intro organizations like that? They had. Well, it's it's sort of uh, surprising, I guess. There was we had a wonderful German teacher, mm -hmm. so we had our foreign language. We had an excellent science teacher, and and we that when you're going to school in a size that. One year you're going to do chemistry, the next year you do biology. Mm -hmm. It's one of those give and take. You know, as a yeah. junior, you're maybe taking something with the scene with the seniors <laughs> and vice versa. We had white teams, high white, this type of thing, rather than in some of the other organizations that you had. Now in high school, then of course you had the the basketball and the football. And it wasn't even eight men then, and we had the full, <laughs> the full team. But um, you didn't see as many female athletics. Yeah, there so weren't as many activities. Mm -hmm. What kind of things did you like to do as you were growing up? Did you, uh, you lived on a farm, did you go to with the farm work at all, or did you come inside with the house? I was an only child for 12 years, oh. <laughs> and then my brother appeared, and so I was the built-in babysitter mother and all these things, and I was also one that loved to be outside. And uh, so I, I was on the tractor and up in the hay. You did both, depending on how right, depending on where I wanted to be. When I was 14, I, I started working at the elevator. Oh. And I worked at the elevator through high school and in college mm. every summer. Then weighing wheat trucks and doing all those important things. <laughs> then you went to college, and then uh, after you graduated from college, did you teach? Then about the one year in Russell, and then uh, married. And when I started my family, I quit. Decided to quit teaching, and I stayed home with my children until they were old enough that I could go back and substitute. They were in school and I could, I, so I substituted for about 10 years. <laughs> I did that for a short time. I have a lot of admiration for That's hard work. Substituting was very difficult, and I think one of the biggest fears one day is going in and I was going to substitute a special ed class, and I was, I was concerned that somebody would get hurt, it would be my fault or whatever. And it was a wonderful experience. I had no problems at all with it. In fact, I did a lot of substituting in that area. And they even, I would end up losing my care or whatever because if everybody was sick, they'd just leave me in the room by myself. I think the funniest one, I, the one I never did want, you don't ever want to go in and substitute for chorus or band. But I did go in one day and I even substituted for welding. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that would be different. That was different. <laughs> and they were actually welding that day. <laughs> well, did you go back to teaching then after your... No, you, you didn't after your children finally. No, I went ahead and... Uh, I had let my teaching certificate that's I went ahead and went back to school and renewed my teaching certificate and I could do that because I could take some computer courses some things that weren't available when I was in school and of course um, exceptional child thing that you had to take mm -hmm. to do all the renewal but there was not any opening for a permanent position so I continued to some substitute. Now, what did your family think about your election and deciding to run for office? What did your children think? You had, you had said you had two children? I two children. My daughter is married and lives in Olathe, and she is in pharmacy school. She drives back and forth to Lawrence. She's 23. My son will be 21 next month. He's a junior at KU. So they were both Peter. out of so home. They, they're not at home. And I did mention it to them. They, oh, that's fine, Mom. Whatever you want to do. If my husband had not agreed to it, I wouldn't have been able to do it at all. Because that takes a lot of time and a lot of support. And continued support, especially when you come down here. My parents were really cute about it. My mother was not happy. Really. She really, she didn't think she wanted me to do that. She really, she was, um, my parents are an age where they've come to depend on me. Oh. And it's 
and, and it's not that they're not both very healthy and active and going and doing all the time, but it was one of those, well, she always knew I was close, which was an hour away. I was close <laughs> to Lyons, and that if she ever needed me, I could just, she could call me and I would be right there. And she, so she had this feeling that I was going so far away, she'd just never see me anymore. And my father just thought it was wonderful. Oh, really? He would, you know, he well, he calls me everything, governor, or senator, or whatever, and sometimes he gets it right that I'm in the House of Representatives, <laughs> but he's cute whenever we go out, and he's always so proud, and he'll introduce me, and, and whatever it's <laughs> that day, that's what I'll be. <laughs> and, and I have found that mothers are, have a tendency to be more like that as far as every time I would have a debate on TV or anything, my mother would be extremely nervous. Mm. It, would, it would just really bother her. And it also, I think it bothers mothers if anybody says anything against their own, well, that's their easy. offspring. Yeah. <laughs> they do not like that. So I think it's more difficult for mothers. But she did tell me at Christmas time, she says, well, Carol, she says, I just think you're you're doing a good job. She says you oh. are going to run again, aren't you? Oh, no. so she's kind of changed. She, yes, she's changed her mind. Well, do you drive back and forth very often? I assume you stay here. Stay here during the week. Uh -huh. it t it's a little under three hours mm -hmm. to drive back to my home. I go home every weekend unless my husband comes here. You have to drive three hundred miles. Mm -hmm. I mean, three hours. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does he spend much time down here? Has he been able to? Uh, well, it varies. And my husband's a pharmacist. We have our own store. So it's, uh, and this is our harvest season. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he he doesn't have the opportunity to come down like a lot of, a lot of spouses will. And so he doesn't get to go with the rest of the women to the governor's <laughs> mansion for the, <laughs> for the parties. But, uh, he also, when, when when I decided to do this, his one little little spoiling point for himself, he says, well, if you're going to do that, I believe I'll see if I can get season tickets to the KU basketball games. Oh. And he did. Oh. <laughs> so we have two season tickets to the KU basketball games. So he games. comes to the games. So on occasion, <laughs> he will come on a Saturday. Oh, that's kind of nice. Go to the yeah. game. Oh, that's kind of fun. Do you think that uh, being in the in the legislature has changed you? Or, uh, Very definitely. You learn to maybe be a little bit more patient. You're you're not as quick to judge because you've had to sit through too many hearings and listen to two sides, and and, it, and you also become very selfish about your time. Mm -hmm. And and you very quickly learn the difference between quality time and quantity time. And then that's very important, especially to keep, uh, I'm lucky, not a family, but just a relationship working. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. And I think with relationships, they either become stronger and you know, and they were strong to begin with, but it actually makes them strong. Mm -hmm. Those that say that that it causes a problem in their marriage, there were probably problems there to begin mm -hmm. with. You know that this job should not cause a breakup of a marriage. Well, you you're on some interim committees, but you're not gone except. The weeks of well, weeks. you know, with, so <laughs> with the budget crunch, they really did not have as many yeah. interim many meetings last year, which I think was great, mm -hmm. that uh, there weren't as many. You've never flown back and forth to your home on the weekends yet? Or you drive? I drive. My husband is a pilot. Oh. And, so he, does he fly and he, he has flown down here once. Oh, really? The weather was decent yeah. enough, I think, the time yeah. before. He's supposed to come tomorrow. Oh, okay. And tomorrow's a little iffy with weather. <laughs> Hope he's going to drive. Surely it'll be okay. Yeah, we have had some kind of strange. But I always laugh. Dri My husband and I took flying lessons together, and I only, I didn't have as many hours. I quit. So I, I, I can get off the ground. I just can't get back on the ground. But that's not really a problem because you're going to definitely come back down. So. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm not a, and I'm kind of one of the white knuckles. So oh, are you? small play. <laughs> well, now, before you, um, you the one the lunch center, and, and maybe even uh, back in, in your growing up years, were you members of any, were you a member of any organizations that you think contributed anything to your being here and being successful as a legislator? Well, I'm very active in the community, and I did I did a lot of that in high school. I did not do it. It did a lot of things you can imagine in, in a high school the size mm -hmm. of ours. I did the annual, the, the school annual. I was in all the plays. I oh I did all the different things. Did the president of the class valedictorian, all the different things that you do, cheerleader, whatever, and it, I felt like my life was so busy that when I went to college, I was going to change all those things, so I was uh, sort of like a little hermit for a while. Well, then last, <laughs> but then, but there are a lot of things that I, that I wish I had gotten more involved in, in college than I did, but, um, when you're in business and you're going five days a week for three hours credit <laughs> with a, a lot of their, their courses that you do or two hours credit, you didn't have a lot of time for some other activities. What about in your community? Do you remember any organizations? Other than the YTs, the basic little groups uh, through uh, those years. When uh, uh, since I've been in Russell, it's the basic groups. It's whether or not you're going to be. I've been on the I was on the library board for ten years, and and you work within the community. And my husband was in the Alps, and we did a lot of work with the Alps service organization and and all your different areas where you help. And and with my background, then I also did a lot of work with the. I would help with the chamber and, and a lot of volunteer work. I, I used to laugh. I called myself a a full time volunteer for whatever organization. Say, a lot of things. And, and at different times I would I would threaten that I was going to get a full time job so I'd have more time. <laughs> but then you never belong like I'm gonna be specific. Sure. You're kind of looking like okay. women voters. No. Junior League, I don't no. suppose they uh, where they have that. Uh, let's see, girls or the Y. Yeah, yeah, really is yeah, I yeah, I'm one of the <laughs> the odd ones out no, there that not. I, I'm not, not sure. I, there's, there are some, but they're uh, crazy. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, do you think it, co it has cost you and your husband a lot in the legislature? Um, what have you given up? What sacrifices do you feel like you've made to be here? Well, you give up. You give up the security of, of being together for that period of time. Uh, we've talked about it before. If this were, uh, it's not something I could do year round. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. the, the, the length of the session is long enough. Uh, when we got to the veto session last year and the unknown, you know, at one point my husband called me and says, "Are they ever going to let you come home? Are they just going to keep you there forever?" And, and there were days when I wondered if they were going to keep us here forever. You, uh, I, I have always been a very independent person. Never had a fear of being by myself in, in, or driving or anything when I used to live in the country and going through high school and you're used to that because you have to do a lot of that too. On your own driving to and from. And, and, and even though there are people around you all the time, it's a very solitary Mm -hmm. Once you go home at night, you're there. We laugh because he finds that when he comes for a weekend or I go home that I talk non-stop <laughs> for about 20 hours trying to tell him, you know, or playing catch-up, just driving crazy. How he talks to you? No, he listens to me. He lets me talk. <laughs> but we talk every day. Well, now, do you have your children just to do? Oh yes, well, I had left uh, my uh, daughter, she came with my parents last year, and she, my, this is the first time my mother had ever been in the Capitol. Oh my goodness. You would be amazed at the number of people who have never visited the Capitol. 
and mother had never been. My father had been to the capital several different times because he used to drive a school bus part time, and he would bring kids, you know, bring students, and different things. So he was, he was used to. It, but my mother had never been here, so it was a fun thing for her to do. And uh, now my daughter's too busy with. Yeah, with pharmacy school and different things. And my son hasn't been over this year either. He's the KK once last year. I know how it's been so I'm hard for everybody's schedules. Mm -hmm. Well, they kept saying it'd be so nice because you're so close to your children. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> yeah, I yeah, am close to them. I just don't <laughs> see them. <laughs> when you're all busy, it's probably the wrong time. So mm -hmm. um, do you think that being in the legislature has changed how other people see you? Yes. It's with some and your your close friends. It's a little bit of not really a resentment, but it's different because the time time you're not there for them, or they aren't there for you like you used to be. So there's a little bit of a feeling of. When you are finally back together again, it takes a while to reestablish that closeness with really you know, and, and if they're really good friends, it it takes a while, but it does happen again. But you, but it it does. You, you feel like a. I feel a little bit like an outsider mm. than when I go back to try and. It's true. If you go a lot of years, that probably would be a little bit something. What? Well, is there anything I haven't asked you that you would like to have? No, I was going to tell you when you were talking about community and different things and things you give up. One of the things, and I, I always try and go back and talk to the high school students because they're always so visiting and they, they want to know strange, vast, mm -hmm. and fun questions that really makes you stop and think sometimes. But one of the things that, that I had to give up is that I always did the county spell. Um, and I always did a uh, annual men's luncheon for the church. Mm -hmm. I, I, I love community theater, and I'm the secretary treasurer of our Russell Community Theater. And, and the mm -hmm. year that I ran, the summer, of course, there I was in June and filed, mm -hmm. I also directed our summer play that oh, year. So mm -hmm. by the time I finally got through the primary, I was I was really behind, mm -hmm. so I did most of my door-to-door -door after the primary. Mm -hmm. So it was a crazy, crazy year, but it's just like I was asked if I would be able to direct another play or be in a play, and you can't. So as far as, those are some of the things that I have to do. Exactly. Because they were things that I really enjoyed. Thank you. Well, that's interesting. Well, I've enjoyed meeting you and hearing yeah, all about you. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's interesting about your age and everything, too. I think that's really common among uh, some of the other women at a certain time in your life when the children are gone and you're changing. What well, you are, and, and this you is a good opportunity, a good time to do something mm -hmm. like this. But, uh, up to, it was two or three years ago, there had never been a woman in the House or Senate who had young children. And that would be very difficult. I mean, it's kind of interesting. It's not surprising, but still, it's mm -hmm. really interesting. Uh, but that's and, and, and each person would be different. I know Rochelle talked about with her children. Her, 